Turning that last denominator. Very good. Y'all are making me feel pretty good about the quiz tomorrow. Uh, I know. This chord says Wednesday. Oh. I was covering both my bases. Okay, so our LCD is just x times x plus 1, right? Because we've got x plus 1 in the first one, x in the second one, and we've got both pieces in the last one. So let's go through and multiply. Okay. What? Oh. All right. So for the first one, the x plus ones cancel. So we have x times x plus three is equal to the second one. Those x's cancel. So we've got x minus three times x plus one. Don't lose that plus sign in there. That makes a big difference. And the last one, everything cancels, but you got to put that one there. Okay? You can't just drop it. When things cancel, it's not zero. When things cancel, it's one. Okay, so to solve this, we're going to have to distribute. x times x is x squared plus 3x. I don't know why I have plus right there. Equals. Foil, x minus 3 times x plus 1, x squared minus 2x minus 3. Don't forget your lonely plus 1 there. Ooh, we haven't had x squared before when we've gotten to this point. Not a biggie. Okay, when you want to solve quadratics, everything's got to be on one side, it's got to be equal to 0, correct? So let's start trying to do that. If we subtract x squared, what happens? Oh, x squared is gone. It's not a quadratic after all. It was just teasing us. <laughs> so then it's just a linear equation. No biggie. Add the 2x. 5x is equal to negative 2. So x is negative 2 over 5. Really, the biggest thing that I want to check at this point is just to make sure that negative 2 over 5 won't make any of my denominator 0. Uh, and then the only thing that would make the denominator 0 is if it were 0 or if it were negative 1. So we're OK there. I'm pretty confident in my process. I'm pretty sure negative 2 over 5 is the answer. If you don't believe me, you can plug it in, but I'm not going to spend time on it. Okay? <clears throat> All right. Last example of the day. It looks nasty, but it's really not that bad. Don't judge it with price cover. That's not kind. 3x minus 9 over x squared plus 6x. I'm not sure that question for Because, I mean, what would you, what, how would you think, what would you think the book that says Hell Hitler on the cover? Um, I will judge that one. It's great. Don't worry about it. Okay. Okay, that first uh, denominator has a GCF of X. So that leaves us with x plus 6. Okay, and I, I'm, I'm going to mark that out so I don't get confused. Okay, we got x times x plus 6. Now, um, we can factor that first numerator, but I'm not going to because if we factored it, all we could do is take out a 3, and that would leave us with x minus 6. We're going to end up having to multiply back out in a minute. Um, now, if it factored into something with x plus 6, then that would make life a little bit easier, and that would that would uh, help, but it doesn't. So we just need to keep going. The second denominator, we need to start by taking out an x. 
that's factoring number one. Factoring number two, that trinomial, factors into x plus six times x plus four. Well, that's convenient because that overlaps with our first denominator. And the last denominator is x times six plus, not x plus six times x minus four. X plus four. I'm just saying everything. Thank you. What's up? Not quite as bad as we originally thought, right? The denominators are very closely related. They might as well be cousins. So x times x plus 6 times x plus 4 is what we need to multiply all of these by. Hmm? Yes, okay, so that's what I was explaining at the beginning. Yes, that first numerator does factor. However, the factoring doesn't get us anywhere. And since we're going to have to multiply it back out, I'm just going to leave it. Now, if I looked at it and that were 3x plus uh, 18, then I would because then it would simplify with the denominator and it would make uh, my work later a little bit easier. Okay, so I've got x in the top and the bottom of the first one and x plus 6. So we are left with 3x minus 9 times x plus 4. The nice thing about that second one is everything cancels and all we've got is the x minus 6. Plus, uh, the last one, the x plus 6 and the x plus 4 cancel, so we've got x times 1, which is just x. So our problem got significantly smaller significantly quicker. Okay, FOIL on the left side, so we get 3x squared. We've got plus 12x minus 9x, so plus 3x. If you need to do that in two steps, that is fine. I'd rather you do that than... Make a mistake. On the right side, add those x's together, we've got 2x minus 6. Now, this one is a quadratic, and it's not going to change. It's just going to be a quadratic equation. So, quadratic equations must be equal to 0. So, we need to move that 2x and that negative 6. When we do so, that's 3x squared plus x minus 30. And we need to factor. That's how we solve quadratics. So 3x times x is going to give us 3x squared. Um, how about we do 10 and 3? We need positive 10 minus 9, because that 3 is going to get multiplied by that other 3. That's going to give us the positive x in the middle. And then last step, set both of those equal to 0, and solve for x. So one solution is negative 10 thirds. The other solution is 3. Again, always go back to the beginning and make sure that that won't make any of your denominators zero. They do not. Our only problems would be if x did equal zero or if x equal negative six and negative four. And none of those were our solutions, so we are okay. So, it is possible to have no solution most of the time you have one solution, and some of the time you're going to end up with two solutions. Um, so all of them on the back have solutions. It's just a matter of whether they have one or two solutions. Okay? So I want you to flip your paper over, and I want you to do all those problems on the back of that worksheet.